Before beginning assembly of the My6, please take the time to read the instructions thoroughly. Please use the various lists in this manual to make sure that all parts have been included in your shipment. The following tools will be required for the assembly process. A racket wrench, a 1 half inch and 9 16 inch and 3 4 inch sockets, adjustable wrench, rubber mallet, a tape measure, a level, standard hex key wrench set, a Phillips head screwdriver, and it is recommended that at least two people are present to assemble the Mind 6. Begin by laying out all the parts that came with the My6 functional trainer. To start, find the leveling foot, the two base frames, and the backbone. Then adjust the leveling foot by threading it all the way in. Then bring the two base frames together, part 13 and 16, with the backbone, part number 17. Once you have all three frames together, connect them using a 3 8 inch by 1 inch socket head cap screw, part 80, with a 3 8 inch flat washer on both sides and a 3 8 inch lock nut. Hand tighten the screws. Note that you will be directed to wrench tighten this hardware in a later step and do not need to do so now. After the three frames are secured, it is time to install the guide rods, part number 26. Attach the guide rods to the bottom of the right and left base frames using the 3 8 inch by 1 and 1 4 inch hex bolts, part number 119, with a 3 8 inch split lock washer, part 90, and a 3 8 inch flat washer, part number 73. Wrench tighten this hardware. Because the frame is lighter at this time, as you have yet to install the weight stacks, it is recommended you now lean the machine back and tighten the screws at the bottom of the guide rods. Apply the lubrication, part number 107, to the guide rods, part number 26, prior to the installation of the weight plates. Save any extra lubricant for use in a later step. Slide the weight standoff, part number 39, onto the guide rods. Please note that the standoffs have a small lip and it should be facing up when installed. Then slide the rubber bumpers, part number 68, on top of the standoffs. You will notice the weight plate numbers you received are numbered 1 through 20. But if you only have the 150 pound weight stacks, you will only use numbers 1 through 15. We recommend you keep the remaining number decals numbers 16 through 20, just in case you decide to upgrade to the optional additional 50 pound weight stacks in the future. Now you can start installing the weight plates one at a time, starting with the plate with the largest number, 15 in this case. If the top plate you received has the lanyard attached to a pin, please remove the lanyard ring from the pin and then remove the pin from the top plate using a 3 8 inch and a half inch open end wrenches. 
the lanyard will be attached to the cable end in a later step. Repeat the installation for the other weight stack. Once both weight stacks are installed on the machine, you can attach the top frame and secure it using the 3 8 inch by 1 inch screws, part 80, and 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. Repeat this process for the other side. Then attach the 3 8 inch by 1 and 1 4 inch screws, part 77, with the 3 8 inch split lock washer, part 90, and the 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, to the top frame to hold the guide rods in place. Now it is time to install the pulley columns. Begin by installing the spindle mount, part number 19, into the top frame. Then align the chin-up bar, part number 18, with the top frame and spindle mount, and secure them together with the 3 8 inch by 3.5 flat head cap screw, part number 87, and the spacer, part number 34, inside the spindle and then secure the 3 8 inch by 22 millimeters flat washer, part number 73, and 3 8 inch thin nut, part number 93, on the outside. Repeat this step on the other column as well. Now it is time to prepare the cables for installation. Begin by removing the jam nut and cable bolt from the cable. We recommend that you extend the cable completely to make sure it is not tangled or rolled during the installation. Take one of the pulley columns, part number 30, and bring the adjuster up to the very top of the column. Feed the cable, using the end without the attachment, in between the two pulleys on the adjuster. Then move the adjuster down so you have a clear view of the cable for the next step. Next, feed the cable through the column sleeve, part number 46, and slide the sleeve into the column, part 30, by lifting the tabs on each side. Then, feed the cable through the spindle mount, part 19, and through the top frame, part 10. Make sure the cable is fed behind the spacer, part number 34. Now, pull the cable down from the top frame, part 10, at the rear pulley bracket. Next, connect the rotating column, part 30, to the spindle mount, part 19, and secure the column with two half inch by one inch flat head screws, part number 79, on each side. Now you will secure the rear pulley. Make sure the cable is behind the pulley as you add the rear pulley, part number 66, to the rear pulley housing. The easiest way to secure this is to insert the flat washer, part 73, on to the bolt, part 82, before inserting them through the pulley. 
Then repeat the pulley installation on the last top rear pulley. Make sure the cable is behind the pulley as you add the pulley to the rear pulley bracket. Pull the cable from the center down to prevent any damage during the installation. Feed the cable through the bottom hole on the main column, through the base frame, and pull the cable out from the front of the base frame. Pull the cable at the rear pulley bracket on the main column out, creating a loop so the 2-inch pulley, part number 65, can be installed. Attach the 2-inch pulley using a 3 8 inch by 1 and 3 quarters inch socket head cap screw, part 82, and one 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, on each side. Secure the hardware with a 3 8 inch lock nut part number 93. Move to the front part of the machine and attach the pulley part 65 to the base frame, making sure the cable loops around the pulley. Secure this using a 3 8 inch by 2 and 3 4 inch socket head cap screw, one flanged pulley spacer part 28, and a 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, on each side, and secure the hardware with a 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. Now feed the cable through the bottom spindle mount, part 12, and then through the boot, part 41, and finally through the sleeve, part 48. Reinstall the cable bolt, which was removed in a previous step, back into the cable and attach the jam nut to secure it in place. Remove the bumper, part number 42, from the bottom of the rotating column using a 732 inch Allen wrench. Then slide the adjuster all the way down until you see the cable connection point exposed at the bottom of the column. Proceed to connect the cable by threading the cable bolt into the adjuster, making sure it is threaded all the way in. Wrench tighten the bolt using a 9 16 inch open wrench. Then slide the adjuster up on the column so you have a clear view of all the components in the next step. Slide the column sleeve, part number 46, into the rotating column as well as the boot, part 41. And then insert the bottom spindle mount, part number 12, into the rotating column. Before you attach the bottom spindle mount to the base frame, Make sure you pull the cable to eliminate the slack and to prevent it from getting damaged. Then proceed to attach the bottom spindle mount to the base frame. Next, secure the column to the bottom spindle mount using two half inch by one inch flat head screws on each side and secure the spindle mount to the base frame using two 
3 8 inch by 3 inch socket head cap screws, part 84, along with one 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, on each side, and secure these with 3 8 inch lock nuts, part 93. Insert the screws on the base frame and put them through the spacer, part 33. Make sure the cable runs between the pulley and the rear spacer when installing this hardware. Wrench tighten all the items. Slide the boot, part 41, and the column sleeve, part 46, down to the bottom of the column. Now you can reinstall the previously removed bumper, part 42, using a 732-inch Allen wrench. On the next step, you will install the pulley bracket, part 15, on top of the weight stack. But before, you need to attach the weight stack pin lanyard, part number 113, to the pulley bracket, part 15. Start by removing the lower jam nut, part 58, from the pulley bracket, part 15, and then insert the weight stack selector pin lanyard, part 113, to the pulley bracket, part 15 and reinstall the jam nut, part 58, making sure the flange part is facing down. Secure the pulley bracket, part 15, into the weight stack by threading the bolt from the bracket, part 15, into the selector stem in the top plate. Make sure the bolt threads at least half an inch into the stem. You will be able to adjust it later if needed. Pull the cables between the top two rear pulleys down to create a loop and insert the pulley, part 66, with the cable into the pulley bracket, part 15, and secure it with a 3 8 inch by 1 and 3 quarters inch socket head cap screw, part 82, a 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, on each side, and a 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. Now you can complete this spindle mount installation by attaching the rear bolts. You will use a 3 8 inch by 1 inch flathead screw on the pull-up bar side with a 3 8 inch washer, part 73, and a 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. And for the other side, you will need a 3 8 inch by 1 inch socket head cap screw, part 80, with one 3 8 inch washer, part 73, on each side, and a 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. Now add the top pulley, part 66, to the spindle mount, part 19, and secure with a 3 8 inch by 3 inch flathead cap screw part 86, and one heavy flanged spacer, part 35. On the other side of the pulley, use a flanged spacer, part 27, one 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, and a 3 8 inch lock nut, part 93. Now you can slide the column sleeve up to its position until the tabs on the side clip into the holes. Repeat the complete cable installation on the other side of the machine and then wrench tighten all the hardware. We recommend that you start tightening the lower bolts of the machine first and move up to the upper hardware last. And then you can tighten the pulleys and the remainder of the hardware.
Once the complete unit is tight, adjust the rear adjuster bumper, part seven, by unthreading it in a counterclockwise motion until it is firmly flat on the ground and tighten the jam nut, part 59, to prevent it from rotating. Next, we will go through the final steps of the assembly process, the shield installation. First, position the center shield, part 105, in front of the weight stack, and then install the panel, part 48, by lining up the three holes and pressing into the three hooks on the center shield. After that, attach the handlebar, part 22, on the plastic panel and secure it on the center plate in the backbone, part 17, using a 3 8 inch by 1 and 1 4 inch button head cap screw, part 77, with a 3 8 inch split lock washer, part 90, and a 3 8 inch flat washer, part 73, on each screw. Then connect the upper part of the shields to the upper plate in the backbone, part 17, using two 5 16 inch by 3 4 inch button head cap screws, part 76, with a 5 16 inch internal lock washer, part 89, and a 5 16 inch flat washer, part 72, on each screw. Note, if needed, you can adjust the tension of the pulley cable. By threading the pulley bracket into the top plate stem more, you will put more tension on the cable, or by unthreading the pulley bracket some, the cable tension will release. Make sure you remove the pulley and cable from this bracket before adjusting it to prevent the cable from twisting. Note that the upper jam nut tightens at the top against the pulley bracket, and the lower jam nut tightens at the bottom against the selector stem. In the next step, in order to have access to the lower screws on the center panel, you need to have someone place the weight selector pin on the weight plate number 10, and using one of the accessory handles included with your machine, lift the stack by pulling the cable end. As a precaution, we recommend that you place something, like a wood block, under the top plate selector stem. This could prevent an injury in the case that a person pulling the weight stack loses grip on the handle. Once the weight stack is raised, connect the lower bolts on the center panel, part 48, to the lower plate in the backbone, part 17, using two 5 16 inch by 3 4 inch button head cap screws, part 76, with a 5 16 inch internal lock washer, part 89, and a 5 16 inch flat washer, part 72, on each screw. Repeat the step on the other side of the shield and wrench tighten both screws. Now you can tighten the remaining four screws connecting the shield, two on the top and two on the bottom. Once the front shield has been installed, proceed to install the tablet holder latch spring. Insert the spring through the backbone, holding the plate on the backbone at the bottom and connecting it to the yellow plastic latch on the top. We recommend that you test the tablet holder latch to make sure the spring was installed correctly. Now, to install the cup holders, start by inserting the thread flange, part 25, to the slotted area of the cup holder, part 50. Then attach the cup holder to the shield and secure it using two 5 16 inch by half inch button head cap screws, part 108, 5 16 inch internal lock washers, part 89, and 5 16 inch flat washers, part 72 making sure the bolts run from the inside of the shield and connect to the threaded flange, part 25, in the cup holders. Wrench tighten the screws. Repeat the cup holder installation process on the other side of the shield. Then proceed to mount the side shields, part 37, to the machine. Line up the holes in the shield with the mounting holes on the machine and make sure the stability bar, part 22, slides into the water bottle holders and attach it to the shield. Then secure the shield using a number 10 by 3 4 inch button head cap screw, part 75, a number 10 internal lock washer, part 88, and a number 10 flat washer, part 71. 
Make sure to leave all the shield bolts loose until all the bolts have been installed. Then proceed to wrench tighten all the hardware. Repeat the installation on the other side of the shield, but before mounting the shield to the machine, install the hanger, part 36, into the shield. Adjust the hanger part 36 so that it points upwards. When fully inserted, the visible portion of the hanger will extend 2 inches from the shield. This ensures the set screw part 57 is tightened into the flat spot on the hanger. Now you can install the shield on the machine by lining up all the holes and securing it using a number 10 by 3 4 inch button head cap screw, part 75, and a number 10 internal lock washer, part 88, and number 10 flat washers, part 71. Now it is time to install the top cap, part 44. Position the top cap on the top of the weight stacks enclosure, lining up the holes of the top cap with the holes on the machine. Then secure it using four number 10 by 3 4 inch button head cap screws part 75, number 10 internal lock washers part 88, and number 10 flat washers part 71. Wrench tighten all the hardware. The next step is to install the user left upper boots part 54 and 55. Position the front boot, part 54, on the top front of the unit, making sure the spindle plates slide between the tabs on the boot. Then position the rear boot, part 55, on the top right, against the front boot, part 54, making sure the spindle plate slides between the tabs on the boot. Once the front and rear boots are lined up, then secure them using four of the 420 thread forming screws, part 112, and tighten the screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Repeat the process on the other side using the front and rear boots, part 52 and 53. Now that the machine has been fully assembled, we recommend doing an inspection to make sure that everything has been assembled correctly. Mm -hmm.